everybody, this is Stephen Allison and this is my Manchester United youth review. Jose playing the way that United should, not quite. And one of the things that he's not been doing is playing the youth, especially the last couple of weeks when we've had the opportunities to play those youngsters, especially Axel Tuanzebe and Timothy Vosu-Mensa. However, United play Arsenal tomorrow and Jose has called up a handful of young players. So I thought I would give you a quick lowdown on who they are, how they play and uh, what I rate about them. So... Uh, Let's go through it. So Jose's taken uh, Scott McTominay, Matty Willock, Axel Tuanzebe and Matty Sunday, as well as Demi Mitchell down to London ahead of the Arsenal game where we're hearing the squad has picked up even more injuries or exacerbated some existing ones. Ash uh, Ashley Young, one of the ones supposedly not going to feature at all. So I think that there's a real chance that some of these could feature against Arsenal. Um... It's a bit of a mirror of last season's home game where Marcus Rashford scored his first Premier League goals, repeating his heroics that we saw against Midgieland in the middle of the week. We also saw Timothy Fosu Mensah have an absolutely fantastic game, looking immense. So it'd be interesting that if United can play a youth team again and, and another, another banter 11 and actually turn Arsenal over because we've got a little bit of a history of doing that, haven't we? Right, so Scott McTominay, we'll start with him. On the bench last weekend against Swansea, and everyone's going, who the fucking hell is Scott McTominay? So Scott, uh, he's a central midfielder, although that's not where he's played all season in the under-23s. Technically, he's sound, uh, without really being spectacular. He's played either as a number nine, target man, or a false nine for the under-23s this season, and he's only got, I think, three goals. So he's not, ex and that's in 22 or 23 games. So he's not exactly pulled up trees. He's not an out-and-out -out number nine, and the, the under-23s have struggled for both movement and uh, a bit of, a bit of sheer ruthlessness in the final third because they've been forced to play so many midfielders out of position uh, in those attacking areas. And Scott has done all right as a target man and he's linked the play up nicely, but he has played out of position and he hasn't really looked spectacular doing it. As a midfielder, he's all right. Again, like not super spectacular when you put him up against the likes of Willock and Goss, then he would be coming third or fourth choice out of all those. So... It made sense that he was put up front. He's probably a little bit more defensive-minded as a midfielder, uh, and that's probably why it's not really worked out for him as a centre-forward. I was a little bit shocked that he got the nod over somebody like Willock, but it turns out Willock had the weekend off last weekend, so uh, that's why Scott was given the opportunity. didn't get on, didn't even warm up by all accounts, so uh, that's Scott McTominay. Maybe you'll see him feature tomorrow. And then on to Matty Willock then. Matty... I do like Matty. Um, he was also tried up front earlier in the season, uh, and I think a little bit towards the back end of last season as well, and he didn't like it at all. Uh, but what it did do was it forced him to round out his game. Matty was a little bit like Scott has been this year, where he's a bit safe. Like Sometimes he'll play the easy ball rather than trying to beat a man or try something a little bit spectacular or try and force something to happen. But that's changed. Since he's been played up front and then come back into midfield, he looks a different player. The defensive side of his game was always sound, but now that attacking side of his game, where he might drive forward with it and he might try and hit a ball from long range, is starting to really develop into this top-level footballer. And I really like Matt, and I think... He should have been the one that was given the nod over Scott last week, even though none of them have managed to make a debut so far. But if Manchester United want a reinforcement in midfield, uh, that can definitely do the dirty work, but also bring something to the table in terms of what they can do with the ball, then Matty Willock, I think, is the guy to do that one, I think. I'd be very happy to see him get a nod tomorrow. The next one is Axel Tuanzebe. Now, I've spoken at length about Axel Tuanzebe and how he's, he was the one that had been hammering the door down he did make his debut, I think it was against Wigan, wasn't it, that he made his debut this season. But it's minutes, we're not talking minutes, the guy needs to be playing matches. He's far too good to be playing in the under-23s. Anybody who watches him can see his class. He's just unbelievable. Class and composure personified. Reminiscent of Rio Ferdinand, where it's strong and aggressive, but it's on the feet and it's just, it oozes quality. Um... He can pick a pass, you're not beating him for pace, he, he can get in the way of absolutely everything and... I've seen a lot of people claiming online that the reason Damian was brought on instead of him last weekend is because he's shit in the air. Well, what the quote I think someone's come out and said is, if he's got a weakness, it's his heading. Now, I've looked for this a couple of months ago. Um, who did we play? I can't remember who we played, but it was one of the games at Lee Sports Village, and I said, I'm just going to watch Tuan Zabian. I'm just going to watch his heading because we'd heard this about his heading previously, and I was like, it's never struck me as being poor heading. Certainly not comically poor, the way some people have gone on about how, oh, he can't head anything. And I tried to watch for it. And yeah, it's not perfect. It's not Steve Bruce. It's not Gary Pallister. But do you know what? Who in our first team at the moment has got 
fucking top level heading at the moment. Not really anybody else. I mean, even Bay is not exactly fantastic. So I think it's fine. I agree with the statement. If he's got a weakness, it probably is his heading. But you're talking about a guy that's 9 out of 10 in all his other attributes. And if he's got something that's a 6 or 7 out of 10, it's not like an obvious flaw that like, oh, he just can't stand up on his left foot whatsoever. It's it's like, yeah, his heading's not really quite up to the standard he's set, which is extremely high everywhere else. I would love it if Tuan Zabi got 90 minutes against Arsenal. Absolutely love it. And I don't think there's a risk. Uh, Jose Mourinho probably does think there's a risk. But I do not think there's a risk in playing Tuan Zabi. I think he's absolutely top class and he's destined for greatness. Matthew Ola Sunday um, played either as a right fullback, occasionally a right wing back, or even occasionally a right midfield, where he actually looks pretty decent as a right midfielder when he, he shakes off those defense, defensive responsibilities and actually tries to make something happen with the ball at his feet. But I've seen him probably have one good game in the under 23s. I just don't think he's cut out for this level. Um, I don't think he's got the standard required to be in the Manchester United Academy, and, and most of the players that are in the academy are never going to make it in the first team. So I don't understand how he's managed to get a nod up for this, um, especially when you've got the likes, I know there's injuries playing a part, but you think United couldn't have sorted what was going on with Cameron Borthwick jackson who was fantastic for us last season. He could have come in and been an option. Uh, Joe Riley, especially at right back, if he hadn't have got the injury, I mean, I'm not sure how long he's out for, but you know, it, it just feels like there's opportunities and players there that should be well ahead of him. And the fact that Manchester United and whoever it was that was in charge decided to put their money on Ola Sunday rather than allowing Tyler Reid to develop doesn't make a lot of sense to me because I think Tyler was an excellent right back and obviously they would have been going head to head this season. And Tyler decided he was going to see how he would get on at Swansea, where I believe he's very close to the first team at the moment. Uh, he's a better footballer than Ola Sunday for me, and I don't understand what Ola Sunday brings to the table. Um, not, not frustratingly shit or anything like that. Just never really stands out in a good way. Never really stands out in a really bad way. Some of his balls, you kind of go, "What's that?" But all of the players do that from time to time. Still learning. I just don't understand how he's managed to get himself a call up into the first team like this. I can only assume on the back of all of those injuries. Um, Demi Mitchell. This is another lad that I really like. Scored a couple of spectacular goals. Uh, missed a panic of penalty early in the season, but didn't let it affect him. Uh, and has come back. Um, now, Demi was playing as a, maybe a number 10 attacking midfielder, second striker, occasionally on the left-hand side of the attacking three. Uh, and he's been converted into a left-back because of injuries and loans and that sort of thing. And he's done absolutely fantastic. He's reminiscent of early Paddy Evra that just didn't care extremely attacking Marcelo-ish Evra-ish he can cut inside he can go around the back he's got a great cross he can come inside and back himself and score obviously playing up front himself uh, he can beat you one-on-one -on -one. he's got tricks defensively yeah he's not perfect he's probably played 10-15 games as a left back uh, in his life, as far as I'm aware, or certainly at Manchester United at this level. So he's got things that he needs to round out in his game, but he's well underway, and I think that the club's very happy with his development as a left-back. And with the injuries that we've sustained, I wouldn't be shocked or unhappy if Demi Mitchell was to get his debut. He's a local lad as well, so I would actually be buzzing if Demi Mitchell managed to get a call. If if I could pick three of them to say, yes, give these lads a shout, I think Matty Willock, Two and Zabi, Mitchell, if those three get debuts tomorrow, whether that's off the bench or from the off, I'll be absolutely delighted. But it's all good, it's all positive, and hopefully them three can come on, make something happen, and change Jose Mourinho's mind about playing youngsters. Marcus Rashford has sort of changed his mind with the amount of games that he's managed to play. We've got more, and we've probably got better as well in the likes of Fosu Men, who I think's uh, got a Better potential than Marcus Rashford. He just needs game time. And you could possibly even make the same argument about Tuan Zabi as well. These are players that are destined to go to the absolute top of the game. They just need opportunities. And uh, Marcus has took his with both hands and grabbed hold of it and no one's taking it back off him. Give the others the opportunity and I'm positive they will do the same. Now, I was going to talk about the Player of the Year nominees. I was also going to cover a little bit of what's been going on the last few weeks with the 18s and the 23s uh, as the season's sort of closing out. There's a couple of games left for both sides. So I thought, do you know what? 
I'll leave that till next week and I'll talk about the Player of the Year nominees, who I'm voting for and why, and a little bit of a pen picture about all of the ones that have been nominated. Uh, and I'll do a bit of a round out of the season and I'll do a little bit uh, on the under 16s and who to watch out for that's coming through next season, seeing as though we are in May now and they will be under 18s in like two weeks time. So make sure you tune in for that. Please subscribe. Any questions about the Academy or anything like that, stick them in and, uh, We'll be doing another youth review next week. Please subscribe if you haven't already. As I said, like, get your comments in, and uh, hopefully we'll see some of these lads tomorrow against Arsenal. Laters.